Yo, what's up guys? Today I'm going to talk to you guys about how to make percussive sounds even wider and bigger. You guys probably might do similar things, but I'll show you how I achieve wider and bigger um, percussive sounds. So, what I'm using for this, you guys can just use drag and drop samples and group them together, or whatever drum plugin you like to use, but I like to use battery for this. Battery is particularly cool for percussive sounds. As you can see, I'm in uh, for you guys that also have this. I'll show you what I'm using. I'm using percussion and the Bali Bounce kit. And this is great because if you're tuning your drums, then you have, uh, when you go into the main and click on the cell, you can tune them here. But uh, that's not what this video is about. Unless you're using battery, I do want to show you that I do turn on the limiter and the transient master and the saturator and kind of play around with those to taste and also I filter and EQ the uh, low end a bit so I'm high passing it here and that's what I do inside of battery I could also use the reverb inside of it but I prefer to use a stock Ableton reverb in this case so before I go any further let me just go ahead and turn off everything so you can hear what I was working with from the beginning so this is the sounds being played completely dry So it, it sounds a little dull and dry, but I, can, I knew that I could make it sound really good in the way I wanted it to. So the first thing I did was, uh, well, these, I'll show you guys these at the end. These are just extra effects that aren't necessary to this, but I have them here. They're off. You can see that. But the first thing I do is I usually I'll throw in a multiband uh, dynamic compressor. From, uh, you can use any. Uh, multi-band compressor if, for this sort of thing but I like to do this with percussive sounds especially because well let me show you what I did here so I'll turn it on now or let me play it with it off and I'll turn it on so it's kinda like I'm compressing the bands that I want for this and you can see that I uh, on the high uh, and the cool thing about the one in Ableton is you can mute and listen and you know tweak around bring down the input and output as you see fit and how you want. So you can see that I kind of went around the 300 and uh, the 3.5K area and I kind of just brought that input down so it wouldn't grab it as much. And uh, so I kind of reduced it. So it's kind of like EQing, but you're doing it with compressed with compressing, which is kind of like a cool idea if you think about it. And um, on the mid range or the mid band, I kind of brought this down a bit too. And on the low end, I kind of brought it up just a little bit of a dB. You don't want to push these things too far. You don't want to go like more than three dB if you're, unless you're reducing a lot. But you don't want to be boosting more than three dB because that might be a little bit kind of uh, too much. But then again, do it by ears, with your ears. Listen and figure that out. So as you can see, I also kind of on the outputs boosted the mid and the low a bit, and that's kind of what I use this for. But again, you don't even have to use this because where I really, really bring in the wideness of the sound is with this plugin called Utility in Ableton, which in any other DAW like Logic would be like a stereo imager or something like that. So what I do with this is I bring it in. I turn on this right here. It's a little like filter that kind of cuts down uh, some of the low end, or at least that's what I kind of understand it to do. And... Um, I bring the width up a bit, so I, it was at 100 like so, so you'll listen to it with it. And then I brought it up to around like 145, 147 around there. 150 even doesn't, just adding more width to it. And the thing about adding more width, um, by default when you add more width, you lose around 3 dB of of like gain so you have to you know listen to it by ear actually I should put it back to 147 because that's when I had this off or I'm trying to think of how I can demonstrate this okay so I'll turn it off and listen to it so you can hear how loud it is right there and if I turn this on and take this off it's wider but it's quieter so to compensate for that I brought it up around 4 dB. So 
So now it's relatively the same volume, but only now it's just wider. So that's kind of what I wanted there. And probably the most important thing is I added reverb. And the thing I like about reverbs or certain particular reverbs, it, uh, I like low cutting and high cutting my reverb. That's something that I love to do for effect, for tone, for, I love doing that for a lot of reasons and or for mixing reasons. I mean, it's just, you want to utilize every parameter in your EQ or get familiar with it at least. So as you can see, I turned on the low cut and I brought that around 400 Hertz around there and I low cutted, I mean, um, and then yeah, on the higher band, you can see I kind of put place that around 3K around there. And I brought my pre-delay down. I uh, left size right where it is. I turned off early reflections and chorus. I didn't touch the diffusion network. I didn't touch these. I brought uh, density and scale up all the way. I did think I brought this down a bit to one second around there. And my dry wet is at 39%. So let me play it off. And now with it on, so you can see that all of this really makes a difference. So if I turn all these off, it's a bit harsh and dull, and now I'm going to turn all my stuff on. It fits better in my mix, it's smoother, It's uh, it has more of a attractive sound to it kind of feels like you're you would hear this in a club environment and uh, so you can hear the difference if I take it off again I'm gonna play it now in the context with everything else not too bad and then out with it it just breathes a little bit better with all that stuff so I know you guys probably do similar things but again I'm just showing you what I do and if you guys don't do this stuff then I guess you're learning something right now and um, these are now the extra effects I was talking about so I'm gonna turn these on and turn on Camel Crush it's a free plugin so you can go to their website www.camelaudio.com and it's free it's a good distortion plugin so I just use very minimal settings here I bring the mix to halfway compress the compressor is kinda right around there tube and uh, this parameter are right around there so it's not like overly distorting and this is a nice little distortion to add some more crunch to it so I'll play it off and I'll turn it on so it gives it like a tube distortion sort of sound so it's kind of nice now I'll play it with everything So it's not necessary to sound because it's already sounding good, but if you want a little bit more of flavor and color, then this is a good way to go. If not, this is probably something a lot of you have, is the sausage fattener, which adds in tons of color and tons of gain and such and saturation. So now that's on, or let me play it off again. Now with it on. So you can hear some color. And if you guys are wondering why the sausage fattener is here and it's not being super loud, that's because you gotta realize when you use this fatness knob and in sausage fattener, it it makes your sound, it does a lot of things. It saturates it, but by nature that makes it just very loud. So I always go down here into gain and I compensate and I brought this down like 9 dB. Because I don't want to make this, I don't want to make this whole track louder. I just want to color it more. So you gotta realize, you gotta think about why you're using it. Do I want to make something louder, or do I want to make it more? Do I want to add some color or some kind of warmth to it? So I just wanted some color and warmth. So I just brought this up, but I brought this the gain down so that when I turn this off. And turn it on it's not that much louder of course I do want a little bit loudness out of the sausage fattener so I kind of didn't compensate too much for it so let me put it 
right at 9 dB where it was. And for color, it's just halfway. So that kind of just uh, boosts a, some certain frequencies and such. And um, so as you can hear now, I actually prefer using the Camel Crush on this. So as you can hear, it's nice, warm, and big, and fat, and breeze, and it's got life to it. So these are the little things I do to percussive sounds, and um, you guys can use any bit of the things I did and apply them as you see fit. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys like this, and uh, like and subscribe lets me know what you guys like and don't like, and also helps me out because I'm a, U I'm a new YouTube guy, and um, I just want to expand and get a much broader audience so I can help more and more people and also helps me uh, do certain things I need to do like to provide more content so thanks guys you guys have been great